Hello once again and if you don't know already, I'm Scott Florence and just now I'm going to be talking about some more of the latest science news, more specifically the latest NASA mission to Mars, a planned Indian mission to Mars, a planned commercial Dutch mission to Mars and what may be a way to predict solar flares up to 39 hours in advance. I'm going to start with NASA's Curiosity mission to Mars first and I'm just going to talk about this briefly because I'm sure that you know most about what's going on with it anyway and there have been images released for the mission of Mars which you can see over me right now and these images will be cycling through as I'm talking and this rover called Curiosity is aiming towards a peak informally known as Mount Sharp also known as Aeolis Mons, and it's in order to study its rocks. And after landing in the Gale Crater at Mount Sharp's base, it's only two kilometers from its target, which, considering that it's been on a journey of about 563 million kilometers, it's deviated it by its course by only about one in three million of a percent. And they have chosen to land in the Gale Crater for Mount Sharp, as Mount Sharp appears to be a mound of eroded sedimentary layers, the lower of which may have been deposited there by a lake bed. But moving on, now India is planning on going to Mars, not sending astronauts to Mars, but sending a capsule to Mars. The Indian government has approved this mission to Mars and the aim of the mission is to orbit Mars and study its geology and climate. But what I can say is the price that's predicted for this is going to be about 70 million pounds, which is only 0.01 of a percent of India's total annual income. Now, there is a Dutch startup company called Mars One, which is wanting to get people on Mars before NASA manage it. NASA are trying to get there by 2030, but this company thinks that they're going to manage it by 2023, a whole seven years before NASA. And it's possible that you don't find this very surprising because there's been much talk about commercial space flights. I've even done a video about my opinions on it and there's been all sorts of companies, especially SpaceX, that have been getting into space. But what's different about this company is not just that it's planning on getting people to Mars, but also that it's planning on getting people to Mars and funding it by having it all as a reality TV show. Now the estimated price for this is going to be about six billion dollars and I personally was expecting more but now their planned schedule is for in 2016 for there to be a communication satellite and supply mission sent to Mars and in 2018 a large planetary rover sent to Mars designed to look for the best locations for there to be a settlement and in 2020 living units, life support units, a rover and more supplies getting sent to Mars and in 2022 the crew will be departing when the settlement is habitable and many different companies such as SpaceX have sent their letters of interest saying that they would be supporting and helping out with this mission. Now at first glance I thought it was doubtful that this was going to be working because I thought it was pretty much just a company thinking that this is a new opportunity to suck out as much money from the public as possible in the forms of these reality TV shows that people for some reason seem to love. But then I started to find out that this company doesn't seem to be thinking that it's going to be able to do it on its own. It's using many companies' expertise to make this possible. Now I've said my views about commercial spaceflight before and I think possibly this may be a good way to make a commercial spaceflight to Mars possible. But would you go if it meant that having the rest of your life as a reality TV show? Because this is a one-way trip. And also, would you watch this reality TV show? Personally, there is no way I would not take the opportunity to go to Mars, even if it's just a one-way trip. Now this possible new method to predict solar flares well in advance. And this new method is thought to be able to predict solar flares more than a day in advance. And this would definitely be extremely useful because we are getting ever more dependent on things such as power grids and satellites which are vulnerable to solar flares and coronal mass ejections which I've talked about in this video here. But there are many doubts about this because it does rely on something that mankind has been very sure about for quite a long time being wrong. And that something is that radioactive decay is entirely spontaneous and random. And I've talked about radioactive decay in the past in this video here. But anyway, 
This new method works by measuring the difference in gamma radiation emitted when atoms from a radioactive element decay, and the change in that is able to predict the solar storms in theory. But radioactive decay is random and spontaneous, which would mean that nothing would be able to affect the rate of decay. But according to the physics that's supporting this method, that's not the case, and that streams of solar neutrinos may be able to change the decay constant, or the rate of decay, of an element. And currently we are reaching the peak of an 11 year cycle that the sun goes through, and th there are going to be more solar flares coming up. And I've talked about the physics of the sun in this video here. But large solar flares can cause coronal mass ejections, which can be fairly devastating, and have a size of up to 300 times the size of the Earth. But if this works, we would be able to prepare and protect technology and satellites before the solar flare arrives and potentially devastates it. And this would be fairly important for living on Mars because Mars does not have an atmosphere that protects it from the violent nature of the sun. And being able to predict in advance when the solar flares are going to arrive could be fairly vital to surviving. But for quite a long time it's been thought that solar flares are unpredictable, so I guess we're going to have to wait and see for this one. But that's all for now and thanks for watching. If you have any questions, suggestions or corrections, please do leave it down in the comments below. The papers about the new discovery of a boson by the Large Hadron Collider have been released and I will put them in the description down below. I would have talked about it now, but I have yet to actually go through them properly. But if there's very much of interest that I've not talked about in a previous video, I will talk about it. But over the next two weeks, I'm going to do my best to make a big backlog of what is videos so if you have any suggestions or any videos that you want me to do regarding that do leave it in the comments or message me because now is the time to do it but thanks for watching and i will see you next time